Outstanding! Welcome back to my expat moving story. I'm Lauren Inglis, and today we're bringing you our final episode of our five-part special with expat author Mariam Nevade Ottima Fiore. In part five, Mariam is putting her coach's hat on as she takes her years of experience and hands-on knowledge and provides us with invaluable tips and advice when considering relocating. Whether this is your first time relocating or your 10th time, you're sure to learn something new from Mariam's advice. Relocating to a new home. New people. New schools. New beginnings and new adventures. Shared with all, right here, on my expat moving story with our host Lauren Inglis. As a seasoned expat and what I like to call a mover and shaker, what is your advice to people out there who are considering relocating and becoming an expat for the first time and to those expats who may be planning to move to their next overseas assignment again soon? (laughs) Sure. I think the first thing I would say is keep in mind, there's no such thing as a perfect move. (laughs) Um, You know, just set very realistic expectations for yourself. What you're doing is is a pretty big thing. And no one is going to come and give you a gold medal (laughs) if you manage it well. Sometimes you have to give that gold medal to yourself. And the way you do it is by having really clear expectations, being really honest and clear about your reasons for moving. Don't forget your why, you know, why you're doing this. Because in the mix of all of these, you know, logistical challenges, emotional, physical challenges, and the whole uprooting of yourself, it can be easy to forget why you signed up for this to begin with. So don't forget your why. I would say that's important. Keep that in mind. And also, I think um, the best advice I can give is trying to learn how to manage um, what you know versus what you don't know. Because as in life, you know, especially in expat life, there are going to be a lot of unknown factors, especially if you're moving in the middle of a pandemic. And a lot of people I see get very frustrated when they cannot know everything about the process or where they're moving to or what things are going to be like. And, you know, you just have to give into that feeling of of not knowing everything. And it can be scary. I know that. I know it can be very scary to not have control over, you know, the whole process or to have so many questions and not know. For some of us who have moved in the pandemic, we weren't even able to do a go-see or a look-see. So we had to, for instance, I I chose a school for my kids virtually (laughs) without ever having seen it. That's pretty difficult. (laughs) <laughs> huge leap of faith, right? And it's yeah. a lot. Usually I go to school and rely on my gut feeling and, you know, talking to the teacher and, and, and seeing the student body. And that's how I make a decision as to which school would be the right one for my children. And, you know, when I couldn't do that because of the pandemic, I had to sit on a different continent in a different country and make that decision. It's hard. It's really hard. But you just have to work with what you know. And the other thing is that you have to maybe ask people who may be able to help you give you an idea. So that can really help in terms of bridging the gap between the things that you don't know, right? So that means reaching out to, you know, different expat groups, reading, you know, looking for people who are living in the location that you're moving to, forming those connections and having a place to ask your questions is a really helpful part of the whole process. And that's something you can do for yourself. So, you know, there are plenty of resources on this topic and I could go on and on, but I think those are some of the key things that I would say would really help someone who's moving for the first time or moving, you know, anytime soon, which, you know, we know that it's, these are very special circumstances. Well, thank you for that. That, I think that's absolutely brilliant advice that would definitely help first time global assignees and people who are looking at wherever they might go next. Um, I think it's very valuable coming from someone like you who's moved to their 10th country. So thanks, that's brilliant. 
Well, I don't know about you guys, but Mariam and her story absolutely fascinates me. I'm actually reading her book at the moment, My Messy Mobile Life, and whether you're a seasoned expat like Mariam or considering a move abroad for the first time, this book sets the reality and expectations of what expat life is all about. Get yourself a copy. And Mariam, would you like to tell everyone a little bit about your book and where they can get it from? Oh, sure. Thank you. I'm so excited to see it in your hands, Lauren. Um, yeah, the book, you know, is available everywhere where you can buy books. <laughs> so that means Amazon, uh, Barnes and Noble, uh, Book Depository, Waterstone in the UK, uh, Expat Bookshop. I mean, you know, you're able to buy it uh, through many different places. And um, it's uh, I, I really did write it as a resource to help other people who are moving or thinking of moving. And so whether it's your first move or whether it's your fifth move, I hope that you will really find the book helpful. Um, and the tools and the strategies and the conversation starters are designed to help you think about your move and your messy mobile life. And so <laughs> I truly hope that you will enjoy it and feel a bit less alone because, you know, here I am, moved to 10 countries and my life is a very messy mobile life. So, you know, I think it's important to keep it realistic. I think it's important not to sugarcoat expat life and to just talk honestly about the joys and the challenges because they both exist and you know one is not going to overshadow the other so it's time to just have an honest open conversation about what expat life is like and not to you know just gloss over one part so that's truly what the book is about I hope you enjoy it um, you're welcome to also connect with me I write a blog all about moving it's called and then we moved to dot com so you can find me at and then we moved to on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm always posting things about the whole moving process and journey and very happy to, to talk about that anytime. Great. Well, thank you so much, Marianne. Loved having you on and really appreciate your time talking to us and telling us all about your moving experiences. And yeah, I'll keep in touch and let you know when I finished your book. <laughs> thank you so much, Lauren. It was my pleasure to be with you here today. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thanks. Some great advice right off the top. Set realistic expectations and realize there is no such thing as a perfect move. Also, try to manage what you know versus what you don't know. The example of using the virtual school tour for her children is a great example of how to manage something you don't know and find a solution. There are many great lessons that I've learned from this interview with Mariam. Two things that come to mind that I believe makes Mariam really stand out is her positive and curious nature. You can see from the interview that she embraces all these challenges in a fun way, never getting upset with things such as lost transport or highly regulated customs procedures. Rather, she sees it all as a learning opportunity and one that she can share with the rest of us. And for that, we want to thank you, Mariam, for allowing us into you and your family's life here on My Expat Movie Stories.